Boker Tov. Shalom Aleichem. It's Mikael again. Let me take these shades off. Sitting here down at Big 12 Lake. Big 11 Lake, not Big 12, Big 11. About to go ahead and uh, get into a little lesson today. But we're going to do it here at the lake. As you can see, got some people over there fishing. Just want to go ahead and, you know, change up the scenery a little bit. And, uh, you know, bring the word today on a very interesting subject. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the kingdom of heaven. And uh, find a seat. I think I'm gonna do it right here. See how this works. How this works. Y'all see me good? Yeah, we can see each other. We can see each other. So, hallelujah. Giving all praise to the Father. Yad Wahe. Elohe Israel. Elohe Abraham. Elohe Yitzhak. Elohe Yaakov. For a beautiful and blessed new day we've never seen before. Um, today I want to talk about a topic that I think. Um, will encourage people and, and hopefully inspire people to continue to, to strive to keep the Father's commandments and serve Him in spirit and truth because we all have a part to play in making it a reality and that reality is none other than the kingdom of heaven. Um, our role in bringing forth the kingdom of heaven is, is imperative and crucial in terms of uh, you know, um, serving the Father and serving our neighbor, loving our Father and loving our neighbor. And um, prayerfully, these words um, will shed some light on the reality of it, you know, the concept of heaven even, um, or the idea of heaven, or the, the reality of heaven, I will even say, that many have misconstrued into thinking that we have to leave this planet in order to go to heaven. And that, of course, is not the case. Um, of course, you know, two principles are our master, teacher taught us in that, you know, um, first heaven, the kingdom of heaven is within. That's in the book of Luke. You know, um, the kingdom of heaven is within. You know, that's where it is to be brought forth from. And secondly, you know, you listen to the, the master's prayer, the way he taught us to pray. He says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name um thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so here we can hear um the principle of the kingdom and the father's will being done both on earth as it is in heaven and one of the most important realities to understand about uh this kingdom <clears throat> is that the Father has chosen the place for the kingdom to be made manifest. Uh, despite what we may believe, despite what we may feel, despite what uh, we have been taught even, you know, the, the kingdom of heaven is a geographic location. It is clearly geographic. And I'm gonna start with a passage that is gonna demonstrate that because uh, it is going to show from where the kingdom of heaven shall pursue or ensue or shall uh you know be pinpointed so i'm gonna start in the second chapter of isaiah okay then we're going to kind of backtrack and go to some things okay this is what isaiah writes yeshayahu his hebrew name the proper name to pronounce isaiah is yeshayahu okay which means the salvation of yah this is chapter two verses one through three but let's even go to four, five. Let's go to five. Here we go. So the word that Yeshayahu, the son of Amat, saw concerning Yehuda and Yerushalayim. And it shall be in the latter days, in the latter days, that the mountain of the house of Yah is established on the top of the mountains. The house of Yah, the mountain of the house of Yah, is established on top of the mountains. So this is a kingdom. Whenever you hear the word mountain, think of kingdom, think of government. And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Okay? All nations shall flow to this mountain 
of the house of Yah. And many people shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of Yah, to the house of the Elohim of Yah Akov, to the mountain of Yah, to the house of the Elohim of Yah Akov, and let him teach us his ways, and let us walk in his paths. For out of Zion comes forth the Torah, out of Zion comes forth the Torah, and the word of Yah from Yerushalayim, or from Jerusalem. For out of Zion comes forth the Torah, okay? The land of Zion, the city of Zion, okay? But know this, most importantly, the people make the city. As any house is not made a home until the people make it a home, the land or the city of Zion is not made Zion until the people of Zion make and establish Zion. Okay, so again, for out of Zion comes forth the Torah and the word of Yah from Yerushalayim. And he shall judge between the nations and shall reprove many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither teach battle any more. O house of Yaakov, come and let us walk in the light of Yah. So here, it is establishing in the latter days where the kingdom shall be established and where the law of the Most High, the Torah, shall proceed from. Where the word of Yah shall proceed from. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Proceed from. It shall proceed from Zion and come out of Jerusalem or Yerushalayim, okay, which means the city of peace. The city of peace, okay. And Zion also means heaven. Now, where does this all come from? How does this all take place? How does this, how is this established? How is this reality established? Well, we got to go back to Genesis 12 when Abram is told to leave his people. And I'm just going to read it so you can hear it for yourselves. It says, And Yah said to Abram, Go yourself out of your land from your relatives and from your father's house to a land which I'll show you. And I shall make you a great nation and bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So Abraham's name shall be made great. Okay? And he shall also be made a great nation, a great kingdom. And I shall bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And in you, Abram, all the clans of the earth shall be blessed. In your seed, Abram, all the clans of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram left as Yah had commanded him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Okay, this is where he left from. Okay, he went from Ur to Haran. From Haran now, he's going to a land that was going to be shown to him. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions they, that they had gathered, and the beings whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they came to the land of Canaan, and Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem. Okay, so now he's in Canaan land, or Canaan land, okay? So this is something that was promised even before Abram, when the land was allotted, when you read the book of Jubilees, to Shem. But Canaan was the one who took it, okay? So he uh, passed through the land of Shechem as far as the Terebinth tree of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. And Yah appeared to Abram and said, To your seed I give this land. To your seed I give this land. And he built there a slaughter place to Yah who had appeared to him. And from there, he moved to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And he built there a slaughter place to Yah and called on the name of Yah. So Canaan is promised to Abram. Okay, let's further take a look at this and see what's going on to um, establish this a little more because eventually what happens as, as Lot and Abram's prosperity uh, or physical material wealth grew and Yah made them prosperous, their shepherds start bickering and beefing over um, land with one another. And so, you know, Abram said, look, we're just going to part ways. You can go one way, I'll go the other way. Or you go this way, I'll go that way, okay? So Lot chose his land, and this is what ended up happening. So after Lot had separated from him, this is Genesis 13, verse 14 through 18. After Lot had separated from him, Yah said to Abram, 
Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, I shall give it to your seed, to you and your seed forever. And I shall make your seed as the dust of the earth. And we had talked about the symbolism yesterday of man being as the dust of the earth, uh, with the serpent slithering, of course, you know, um, and eating the dust of the earth, consuming the dust of the earth, and devouring the dust of the earth, which is a symbol of man. So I shall make your seed, verse 16, as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the dust of the earth, then your seed also shall be counted, or could also be counted. Arise and walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built a slaughter place there to Yah. So now he sees the land that is promised north, east, south, and west, in the directions, all directions, which is known as Greater Israel. I'll post a map of the actual inheritance of Abram um, that is described in the book of Numbers a little more detailed. So now um, we're going to go over to verse uh, chapter 15 and read a couple of verses here. This is chapter 15, um, 1 through uh, 7. It says, after these events, this is after the battle of uh, the kings um, in which he met Melchizedek um, after bringing Lot, rescuing Lot from uh, Kedar La Omer, Kedar La Omer, the king of Elam. Okay, and so um, this is after that matter took place. This is Genesis 15 1 through 7. So after these events, the word of Yah came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward is exceedingly great. And Abram said, Master Yah, what would you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damasek or Damascus? And Abram said, See, you have given me no seed. And see, one born in my house is my heir. Okay, so now, verse 4, And see, the word of Yah came to him, saying, This one is not your heir, but he who comes from your own body is your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look now towards the heavens and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So are your seeds. So here's the first comparison of his seed compared to the stars of heaven. We'll get to that teaching a little later, but that's very important. And he believed in Yah, and he reckoned it to him for righteousness. Now his belief was about obedience. His belief was not just, okay, I accept that and believe it, and I'm just going to sit here. Everything Abraham was commanded to do, his belief was demonstrated by his action, okay? That's why he was counted as being righteous, or he was reckoned as being righteous. It wasn't just because he believed in, in his mind and that was all he did. He followed through with the belief and believed so much so that his actions were a clear demonstration of it. So let's just kind of clear that misconception up real quick, okay? So verse 7. And he said to him, I am Yah who brought you out of Ur of Kasdim to give you this land to inherit it. So this is an inheritance. The kingdom of heaven is an inheritance, okay? Because this is the land from which the Torah shall come forth and the word of Yah shall proceed. So this is going back to the inheritance that Abram was promised, that Isaac was promised, that Jacob was promised, okay? And we'll get into that vision that he has in this chapter a little bit later. But um, we want to kind of jump ahead to some things um, to understand the importance of this land and, and, and why Yah has chosen this land. We're going to turn to Deuteronomy 11 real quick and read something here. This is uh, Deuteronomy 11. I'm going to read the 10th through the 14th verse. Okay. Well, let's go back. Let's go the 7th through the 8th through the 14th verse. I'm sorry. So... There are conditions that this inheritance is based upon, and the first verse is going to give you the conditions, and then the second will give you the uh, significance and the importance of the land of Israel, which is where the kingdom of heaven shall be established, the headquarters, the capital of the, the spiritual capital of earth, okay, not the eternal city they call Rome, that is not the capital, the spiritual capital of earth. The spiritual capital of earth is Jerusalem. Please, let's understand this clear. Okay, here we go. Verse 8. And you shall guard every command which I command you today. This is Deuteronomy 11, starting at verse 8. And you shall guard every command which I command you today, the conditions, so that you are strong and shall go in and shall possess the land which you are passing over to possess. 
and to prolong your days in the land which Yah swore to give your fathers to them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. This is not the land of milk and honey. The Americas, particularly North America and the United States of America, is not the promised land, nor is it the milk of honey. Continuing. For the land which you are going in to possess is not like the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt from which you have come. This is even spiritual Egypt, which is where we are now where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. But the land which you are passing over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water from the rain of the heavens, a land which Yah your Elohim looks after. The eyes of Yah are uh, your Elohim are always on it. His eyes are always on the land of Israel from the beginning of the year to the latter end of the year, from the beginning of the year, which starts in April to the latter end of the year, which goes until, uh, pretty much uh, March okay that's the year and it shall be that if you diligently obey my commands which I command you today to love Yah your Elohim and to serve him with all your being with all your heart then I shall give you the rain for your land in its season the early rain and the latter rain and you shall gather in your grain and your new wine and your oil very very key terms in there um, so latter rain early rain latter rain of course it's speaking of uh the physical crop of the harvest which a man needs to survive but we also know that man shall not live by bread alone so there's also some, some spiritual connotations in that which are dealing with resurrection which are dealing with harvest which are dealing with us producing the first fruits of our faith which is righteousness which will allow us to be risen okay our belief obedience there is a hyphen in that there is a belief obedience which is required for us to receive the early and latter rains which will then give us listen to this the ability to gather in our grain the bread which is the body of messiah okay the new wine which is the teachings okay the covenant based on the covenant and the oil which is the anointing we need to be consecrated in order to be a part of the body in order to receive and carry out the teachings which will allow us to receive the promises of the covenant okay let's make that clear so there we go this is the importance of the land Yah's eyes are always on this land day in day out okay now let's go to the 28th chapter of Genesis and let's take a look at how spiritually high how spiritually important the apex of of the spiritual realities of geographical locations on earth this particular place is here we go this is deuteronomy 28 we're going to start at verse 11 and we're going to go to verse 18 now this is after jacob actually um deceives his father yitzhak yaakov shall i say yaakov who is the supplanter which is a part of his um carnal nature uh, he was kind of, uh, of, a, of a very mischievous and, um, um, you know, very manipulative. That's the better word, a manipulative individual. Y'all had to deal with that, though. Y'all had to deal with that because the seed that was going to come through him, it took some shrewdness and some wisdom, you know, and some um, some very cunning uh, craftiness, you know, but his, he was harmless. Jacob was a harmless soul, okay, and this is what we have to understand. His intentions were not of, of harm but he he went about some things in a way that were kind of crafty and underhanded at times but Yah changed his nature which is why his name became israel okay but here we go this is uh chapter 28 starting at verse 11 okay 10 it says yaakov went out from beersheba and went toward haran so the opposite way that abraham came into the land now jacob who is the third of the um patriarchs abraham isaac and jacob is now returning to the land from which abraham came isaac stayed in the land okay isaac is the only patriarch of the three that stayed in the land where abraham came to the land and then jacob went away from the land only to come back so hey jacob went out from beersheba and went toward haran and he came upon a place and stopped over for the night for the sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep and he dreamed and saw a ladder set up on the earth and its top reached to the heavens and he saw messengers of Elohim going and come going up and coming down on it okay um, and see Yah stood above it and said I am Yah 
the Elohim of your of Abraham, your father, and the Elohim of Yitzhak, the land on which you are lying, I give it to you in your seed. We're going to come back to this stuff. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall break forth to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and all the clans of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your seed. And see, I am with you and shall guard you wherever you go and shall bring you back to this land, for I am not going to leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And Yaakov, or Jacob, awoke from his sleep and said, Truly, Yah is in this place. Yah is in this place, he said. He's in this land. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of Elohim. And this is the gate of the heavens. This is the gate of the heavens. This place in in the tradition, in, in, in understanding how the oral tradition has passed down, is understood none other than Jerusalem. Jacob had his dream in Jerusalem. Okay? We're going to come back to it. But again, I'm going to read that verse again because it's that important. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? Okay? This is none other than the house of Elohim. And this is the gate of the heavens. Okay? This is the gate of the heavens. And Yaakov rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, <clears throat> set it up as a standing column and poured oil on top of it. He anointed the oil, okay, the anointed cornerstone. And he called the name of that place Bethel. However, the name of the city had previously been Lutz, okay? So we're just gonna pause there and I'm gonna go back in descending order. So Bethel, the house of Elohim, previously called Luz. Yes, Luz is um, a location. But this is also a Yebusite area, okay? Lutz is um, an area where Yebusites actually live in the Bethel, not the Bethel that we know of, um, that, that actually Abraham um, walked through. But this is a literal house of Elohim. This will be the place where the house of Elohim will be established. The tent, the tabernacle, or shall I say the temple shall be established in this place, okay? So Jacob... When he awoke from this dream, he realized this was an awesome and fearful place. This is none other than the house of Elohim. This is where the temple will stand, he's saying, in a prophetic vision. He's saying this in a prophetic, in a state of prophetic utterance more so. And this is the gate of the heavens. This is where heaven and earth meet. This is where the kingdom of heaven is to be established. From this place here shall the kingdom of heaven be made known unto the rest of the earth, okay? So this is what he's saying, okay? So going back um, to verse 14, and that was verse 17 that we just read, but verse 14, he's pretty much, the father's reiterating the promise that was made to Abraham, to Abraham's grandson, which is Yaakov or Jacob. He said, your sheep shall be as the dust of the earth. And you shall break forth to the west and to the east, to the north and the south. This is the same vision that Abraham received, or the same prophecy Abraham received back in Genesis, I do believe, the um, uh, 14th chapter. 13th chapter. He says, all the clans of the earth shall be blessed in you and your seed. This is the straight reiteration. This is a, a, a carrying forth of those promises again, once again, okay? Um, he reminded him who he was. I am Yah, your Elohim of Abraham, your father, the Elohim of Yitzhak. The land on which you're lying, I give it to you and your seed. That's the promise. This is your land. This is your land. So this ladder that he dreamed of in verse 12 is the reality that Nimrod and his compatriots attempted to achieve with the Tower of Babel. They tried to build a tower whose top reached into the heavens, right? So that they can have access to the heavens. But this is exactly what Satan wanted to counterfeit, right? Satan attempted to counterfeit everything that Yah had established um, in spirit on earth because Satan or Lucifer, Halel, wanted his own kingdom. Okay, so Shinar was the place where it initially started, which then went to Babylon, which is Babylon, which then went to Persia, which then went to Greece, which then went to Rome and is now in Rome and now is broken up into three parts of Rome, which is London City, the Vatican City, and the District of Columbia. So these are all false capitals of heaven on earth. These are Satan's, uh, or the enemy, the adversary. That's what I mean by Satan, the adversary. His name is not Satan. His name is Hillel. Let's make this clear and understood. His name is Hillel, which is the fallen messenger who rebelled from heaven. Satan is just a title of his, okay? 
So this is the, 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 the reality that Jacob perceived in spirit, okay, through his vision of receiving the vision that this is where heaven and earth are actually united. This is where the messengers of Yah come, descend, and ascend, okay? So this is what we have to really perceive in our understanding. And I'm just going to end with one more verse because this is getting kind of lengthy to just kind of bring this point home <clears throat> about this place being heaven, okay? Uh, let's see. We want to go to, I believe it's chapter 10. Over 12. There we go. This is chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews, and we're going to close on this part one. This is part one. We're going to have part two coming up. <clears throat> so this is um, the author of Hebrews describing the situation of when Israel first received the promise of, not the promise, first, first received the Torah at Mount Sinai. Okay? And it was a very... Um, powerful experience on this mountain and everything is related to mountains when it comes to Yah because it is the establishment of his government his kingdom on earth so this is where the kingdom was birthed on Mount Sinai when the Torah the law of the kingdom was given which is the constitution for the kingdom of heaven please understand that the Torah is nothing more than the constitution for the kingdom of heaven okay without it there's no order without it there's no uh, rule Without it, there is no uh, righteousness, justice, there's no truth, there is no protection of its citizens, there's nothing, okay? There is no standard of judgment that will be rendered without the Torah, okay? But this is what the author of the book of Hebrews goes on to say, comparing the reality between Mount Sinai and Mount Zion. Check it out. He says, for you have not drawn near, this is 12, 18, Hebrews 12, verse 18, for you have not drawn near to a mountain touched and scorched with fire, and to blackness and darkness and storm, and a sound of a trumpet, and a voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that no further words should be spoken to them. For they could not bear what was commanded. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot through with an arrow. And so awesome was the sight. That Moshe said, I exceedingly fear and tremble. Listen to this, verse 22. But you have drawn near to Mount Zion. You have drawn near to Mount Zion. This is a literal location on earth of which one I have stood on all praise to the Most High. In which Yah has established, which right now though is under the hands of the fourth beast. And that's something that we'll talk about a little later too. He says, but you have drawn near to Mount Zion. Verse 22. And to the city of the living Elohim, Yah has chosen Zion. Yah has chosen Jerusalem as the city from which his throne will be made known, which is what we'll get into next time, part two. But you have drawn near to Mount Zion and to the city of the living Elohim, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to myriads of messengers, to the entire gathering, the gathering where the gathering place should be at the temple, all three festivals, the pilgrimage festivals, have to be at Mount Zion on in Mount Zion or, or in Zion or in Jerusalem, okay? To the entire gathering and assembly of the firstborn, having been enrolled in heaven, which is the literal heavens, but this is the reflection of it. This is where we are to make it known on earth. And to Elohim, the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, and to Yahushua, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, which speaks better than the blood of of Kabel. So this is the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living Elohim. Okay, this is what we have to understand as relates to the kingdom of heaven. It's going to proceed forth from Jerusalem. Dr. King said this his last night on earth. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna wrap it up with this. He said, you know, longevity have its place, you know, but right now I'm not fearing anything, I'm not fearing any man, you know, for my eyes to seeing the glory of the coming of the Most High, he's saying, because he says, you know, I, I, I've been to the mountaintop and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. He said, I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land, okay? And you have to read that speech in its entirety to understand the context from which he was speaking, because early in the speech, he tells you after explaining 
why the parable of the Good Samaritan that the master teacher taught is set on the Jericho Road because he saw why the Jericho Road is a perfect ambush because he was on Jerusalem. He said the first time Coretta, my wife Coretta and I were in Jerusalem, you know, we saw how 20 minutes uh, trip upwards gives you 1,200 feet of of Jerusalem. You go up 1,200 feet to get to Jerusalem, which is how how the elevation of that particular city is. It is a mountain. Whenever you, ever, whenever you go up into Jerusalem, your ears are popping. I know because I speak of experience and from experience. And there's others who will tell you that as well. Whenever you go up into the mountain of Jerusalem, your ears will pop because it is an elevated place, spiritually and physically, okay? But he goes on to say 20 minutes going down in Jericho, it's 1,200 feet below sea level. Or not 1,200, it, yeah, 1,200 feet below sea level. So the winding road, the treacherous road, the, the treacherous pass is what the road is called, was very perfect for ambush. So when Dr. King was speaking of getting to the promised land, he wasn't talking of some abstract notion and idea. He was speaking of a very geographical location, okay? Matter of fact, so geographical that he told Harry Belafonte shortly before his death, after looking disturbed and Harry asking him, uh, Martin, what's wrong? He said, Harry, I'm afraid that I've integrated my people into a burning house. He realized what was the deal, okay? So we only now have to realize what the deal is, and we have all of this information before us to investigate, to search out for ourselves, which I pray you do. Don't take any teachings or any words that anyone says is tr as truth until you find out for yourself. So with that, may these words truly inspire and, and educate and, and, and give us the impetus to really understand what the desire of the Father is and what his will is as it relates to his land and the promised land and the inheritance of the children of Abraham um, is all about. So with that, may y'all bless you and keep you. May y'all cause his countenance to shine upon you, be kind unto you. May y'all lift up his face unto you and give you peace. One love. Shalom. Shalom. Elohim.